chicken breast, aka hen's bosom. <laughs> Nobody calls it a hen's bosom. Today I will be making flash in the pan chicken with burst tomato sauce and it's gonna burst your mind. We need to remarket boneless skinless chicken breast and call it in the bosom of the hen. <laughs> Demented. <laughs> okay, the fact of the matter is, this is a piece of protein filled with contradictions. On the one hand, people say it's easy, but what it really is, is disappointing. <laughs> Some people say it's fast and other people say it's dry. Some people say it's healthy and other people say it's just misery on a plate. How can we break through these contradicting ideas? I will tell you, we're gonna cook it right, we're gonna sauce it right, and we're gonna season it right, and then it will be right. And then we will be in the bosom of rightness. <laughs> Step number one, smash the bazoom. One of the great things about the chicken breasts that we should embrace is that they do cook really quickly and because they don't have bones or skin, all you need to do is cook the protein until it's like nice and juicy. So because the chicken breast is thinner on this end and thicker on this end, if I were to cook it without equalizing the thickness, it would get dry and crusty over there by the time this was cooked through. We will remedy that with some simple smacking of the bazoom. I'm using parchment paper. You could use plastic wrap. You could put the chicken breast into like a freezer bag and do it in there. Or you could just go rogue and just do it like nude and then clean your cutting board. If you don't have a meat mallet, use a little heavy skillet or a rolling pin or the baseball bat that you keep behind the door for the raccoons. And I'm mostly focusing on the chonky part of the breast. So we're getting down to about a quarter of an inch thick and you can see how I have smacked it about and now it seems very even. Once these are flattened, I'm gonna season them with salt and pepper, both sides. And I think cutlets are like a super popular choice for breading and frying. Frying makes things nice and juicy and succulent. The cutlet crust gives great texture because the chicken breast by itself only has one texture and that texture is often just bland and dry. That's why it's so popular in breaded preparations. In the method that I'm gonna show, we're gonna get that texture contrast through building up a really awesome crust on one side by cooking it really hard and hot on one side for almost the entire time. And that's how you get around a boring to eat, not very interesting texture. It's also gonna have a ton of juiciness, which because chicken breast has no fat, it just doesn't have moisture coursing through its bazooms. This recipe is from the Monday through Thursday section of That Sounds So Good. So I do think of it as a weeknight recipe because it goes so fast and because I'm building the sauce in the pan that the chicken is cooking in, I need to have the rest of my ingredients ready to go. There's really no downtime once you start cooking the chicken to like turn around and be slicing and dicing. You have to do that stuff um, in advance. I would say in my family, we never went through a big chicken breast time despite the fact that i did come of age in the 80s which was like a hardcore jane fonda jazzercise aerobicize low fat alestra this is bad for you that's bad for you my poor poor husband he himself went through what is lovingly referred to in his family as the chicken breast years where boneless skinless chicken breast was discovered in their household they were big family, four siblings, and it was one of those proteins that was like super easy to make, but it was super bad when it was made. <laughs> so the memory that these guys have is of like a lemon and soy marinade, which totally tracks for the era, that then the chicken breast was layered in a casserole dish and put in the oven. My sister-in-law referred to it <laughs> as coming out salty and brown. So you don't wanna do that. Baking is one of the worst things you can do with chicken breast because the more time it has to be exposed to heat, the more it's gonna dry out. The goal here is to like have it exposed to heat for a very short amount of time, giving it very few opportunities to get dry. So having everything prepped in advance is gonna help you get there faster. I think he said they ate 
that chicken breast dish like three nights a week. My family was a very full fat family. So we were having chicken thighs at that time when they were having chicken breasts and we were having pork chops when they probably were having pork loin. All right, so the garlic, I want pretty thin because it's gonna go quickly in the pan. And I honestly think that chicken breasts innate quality of being lean and boring is the reason why a lot of times chicken parm is really disappointing. Seems like it's gonna be like the greatest thing you ever had and then it too is dry and it's because of that two-step long cooking method. So for the shallot, also cutting pretty thin. I do want some texture of the shallot in the finished sauce. You don't want to go past this step until you're really ready to eat because the cooking process, the whole thing is gonna take like max 10 to 12 minutes. All right, so you wanna choose a pan that is going to hold the chicken breasts snugly. I don't want there to be a ton of space in between them and I don't want them overlapping. So for me, that meant my 10 inch cast iron. I'm putting it over medium high. This is an amount of olive oil. You need enough to completely coat the surface of the pan without any bald spots. Because the chicken breast has very little fat of its own, this fat is really, really important to create like a hot and conductive and delicious cooking medium. So you can see it's just started smoking and chicken breasts are going in. So right away when the chicken hits the pan, I wanna press on it really firmly. And this is super important to make sure that the whole surface of the protein is making good contact with the pan. When protein hits a hot surface, the first thing it does is the protein strands in the meat are gonna pull together and like bunch up. So if your chicken breast is going in like this and this is hot, right away you have this like pulling up of all of the protein strands and then it might be touching on this end and this end, but this part of the protein has like pulled away a little bit from the pan. So you're pressing it back down to flatten that. It's really important so that we get the super gorgeous browning all over the front instead of just a ring around the side and then like a really sad beige color in the center. The browning is not just a sign that the meat is cooking, it's flavor. Getting these crispy bits, the caramelization, the Maillard reaction, and it's also giving us that crunchy surface texture, which otherwise we wouldn't be getting because there's no breading, there's no crispy skin, there's no cartilage to chew on. The other thing, once the chicken has been flattened and smashed, I'm gonna cook it basically the entire, almost the entire time, 90% of the time on one side. The fact is you never get as good browning on the second side as you do on the first. What I'm looking for is to watch the flesh of the chicken go from that pinky iridescent color to white and opaque, which is what it looks like when it's cooked all the way through. And that's gonna happen around the edges first because they're exposed to the most heat and it's slowly gonna work its way into the center. So as soon as I see that it's almost completely cooked with just a little bit of rawness on the top center surface, I'll turn it over to the second side just to finish cooking that last bit and then that's it. Once I start to see browning on the edge, I'm gonna lift up and just let the oil like flow back underneath that piece and do it again on this side just lifting up and tilting the pan so that the fat runs underneath I went to chicken Neverland for a minute there it's a beautiful place <laughs> so this is six minutes in amazing color couldn't be happier. It looks like a beautiful crispy skin on like a roast chicken or a pan roasted chicken thigh. And it's super crispy and just got gorgeous color. Really staying on that second side for no more than a minute. 
I'm going to take these out and let them rest. They're just cooked through. While they're sitting here, they're going to release some of their juices and we're just going to set those aside and I can make the pan sauce right in the same skillet. I'm going to add a little bit more olive oil. There's a lot of really good stuff in the bottom of this pan. All of the brown bits, the fond, the kind of crispy bits of chicken that adhered themselves to the pan. I want all of those in my sauce. So as the shallot cooks, it's going to release some of its juices and those juices are going to help pick up and dissolve the chicken bits that are left on the surface. So then all of that flavor is going to end up in the pan sauce. A little bit of salt and some red pepper flakes. If you don't like red chili, you can use black pepper instead. But what I'm going for in this sauce is something tangy and spicy and sweet and juicy. So one to two minutes in, I'm seeing browning, I'm seeing a little light caramelization, I'm seeing softening. This is the moment when I'm gonna add my cherry tomatoes, about a pound and a half. I do wanna keep everything moving. As soon as the tomatoes go in, what I'm looking for is some blistering, a little bit of color change on the skin. We're over medium heat now. I'm gonna let these soften up, and while I do, I'm gonna measure out my vinegar. So the other great thing about having a pan sauce is that, say the phone rang, say your kid came home and told you a ridiculous tall tale about what they were doing after school, and maybe you got distracted. The chicken breast went a minute or two longer, and it's not quite as juicy as you were hoping for. Having a nice, juicy, acidic, sweet, sassy, spicy little sauce will kind of cover up any of the mistakes that you may have made along the way. These have only been in here for a couple of minutes, and I can see some of the skins are splitting. As soon as I see that, I'm gonna start pressing down on the tomatoes. These tomatoes have given up their goodness. I have still nice, juicy, big, meaty bites of tomato, but also like a fresh tomato sauce in the pan. And because oh most of the flavors in here right now are sweet with a little bit of acidity from the tomato, I'm gonna kill the heat, add the vinegar. This is red wine vinegar. And there's tons of residual heat in the pan. Kind of just stirring that through. I wanna cook it off without any heat on the pan. It's still boiling around the edges. And I'm just gonna check it for salt. Mmm. It's like a delicious sweet and sour sauce. If you didn't want something as sharp as red wine vinegar, use something less acidic and it'll be a little bit more mellow. But I really like that combination of the sweet tomatoes with the acidic vinegar. And then the last step, off heat, um, adding some of the chives that we did before. You could use basil, tarragon, parsley, any tender herb that you like with tomato. Now that the chives are in, sauce is done, chicken is done. I have this nice chicken juice that has collected on the plate and I'm gonna add that. Soup's on. Welcome to Boobtown USA. The chickens got bazoomed, the tomatoes got bursted. <laughs> we've got saucy, we've got crispy, we've got shiny, we've got juicy, and we want for nothing, essentially. Hen bosom with burst tomato sauce. Let's see how delicious you are. Mmm. There should be a nice um, sear. Mmm. Mmm. I don't even like chicken breast. I'll be totally honest. Here's what happens. That first side that got the delicious browning is so crunchy. Like I literally crunched through a seared crackly layer. And the underside that we just barely cooked on the second side is so tender and succulent. Juices. Ooh, juices. And then this tomato sauce 
Oh my God, perfectly complements it. Frankly, I'm the perfect person to make this for because I am a total chicken breast hater, cynic, skeptic. And if you, this dish could turn a bosom hater like me into a chicken lover, imagine you chicken lovers, you're about to just be madly in love, passion. And the chicken, eh, people, you're about to have your eyes opened. So if it's chicken breast versus the world, the world wins. I'm the world in that scenario because the chicken was my nemesis and I've conquered it with my sauce.